Hey, MFers, we're back again for the third week in November. And if you are listening to this episode, most likely you can watch this episode because this one is going to be put on YouTube. That's right. We're back. You're listening to Movie. Movie. Film. Film. It's the podcast where we pick a flick and decide if it's a movie or a film. I'm Nate. And don't you see what's happening? They're fattening us up. They're going to kill us all. <laughs> and I'm Terrell. And you ain't gotta love me. No. That I love you. That's from Moonlight. It is. I just yes, watched that Moonlight. today. I, I <laughs> saw. <laughs> yeah, it's Barry Jenkins' birthday. Happy birthday, Barry! Do you know mine? No, I do not. Should I? I should know it, probably. No, go ahead. Say what it is. It's from Chicken Run. Oh! Yeah, we're doing Lady Bird today, so I quoted a, a lady that's a bird. <laughs> exactly. Right right on the nose. Like, perfect. Yeah, a little left of the nose. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, we'll be talking about Lady Bird. But first, you watch anything this week? I did not. This all is going right. to be all you. But first, yeah, let's hear about what a- Nate watched this week. Yeah, this is the Nate segment. <laughs> all right. Uh, well, I I only watched eight movies this week. <laughs> <laughs> only. Uh, I focused on come. I focused on coming of age movies. Uh, in honor of Lady Bird, mm-hmm. I'll start with Moonlight since you quoted it, and I just watched it today. Uh, check out episode twenty if you want uh, a more in depth conversation about Moonlight. But man, what a film! It's, it's so good. <laughs> um, just everyone giving incredible performances. Uh, it's Ashton Sanders, uh, Jarrell Jerome, Naomi Harris. I mean, Mahershala Ali got the Oscar for it. Sure uh, did. Yeah, just yeah, and just the color yeah. and just Miami. I think that's something I'll be getting into, and I guess I can bring it up now. It's just with coming-of-age movies, I really appreciate uh, a strong sense of time and place. And uh, Moonlight yeah, definitely goes little, through the years of, of, of Miami and then uh, a little bit of Atlanta. Mm-hmm. Uh, just, yeah, I mean, listen to, listen to the episode. Yeah, l- want, listen to the episode. because like want the deets. Yeah. Um. I also rewatched uh, Almost Famous. It was only my okay. second time seeing that. Have you seen that? No, I haven't. Oh, it's a. I uh, think it's been on a on my watch list, but I never put it on an actual list. But like, mm. I know of it, and I do want to watch it. Yeah, it's. I'm kind of. It's weird that it was only my second time watching it because I saw it years ago and it, I liked it a lot. But I don't know. Never went back to it, even though it's definitely the kind of movie that I feel like. You could just turn on and just hang out. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, my favorite parts of that movie are uh, occur over the phone with um, with uh, the Philip Seymour Hoffman character as uh, a mentor and um, Francis McDormand as the concerned mother. Mm. Uh, kind of like the the devil and the angel on our uh, protagonist's shoulders. Uh, good, good Jason Lee movie. Uh, it holds Ooh. up better than Mallrats, so that's good. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, yeah, great music. check that episode out too. <laughs> yeah, great music. It's about uh, rock, so it's got a lot of rock and roll in the soundtrack. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, just really fun. I'll, I'll be keep, I'll be checking that out. Yeah, yeah keep going. I guess I'll keep, keep going. going. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, I watched the World of Us. 
which is a Korean film from 2016 mm -hmm. about a, a girl in fourth grade, a loner, who makes a friend over the summer, and then uh, that friend joins her class, and then they drift apart. And it is devastating. Yeah. But also, like, the scale is just so small. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, a, a great thing about coming of age is just that it, it posits that the lives of, of young people are um, as, the events are as monumental as, I don't know, uh, any other movie. Yeah. So when, uh, when there's an argument over a friendship bracelet, it does kind of feel like the end of the world. <laughs> It, it it tore me apart. Also, the uh, the mother from Parasite was in it, also playing a mother. The uh, the rich mom. The, no, no, the main mother, the mother of the okay. main family. Uh, but she was a, a different kind of mother in this one. Oh, uh, okay. she's a good actress, and she's gonna. Uh, I have another movie that she was in that I'm gonna watch next. That was she actually did a movie with the director of Burning. Okay. So I'm going to check that out next. Nice. Yeah, check that episode out too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, so yeah, The World of Us is on Amazon Prime if you want a uh, something different. Uh, I thought it was very... Just really well done and very incisive look. And just really heartbreaking. And I'm not sure I've seen um, bullying uh, presented in a movie as well as it was in this, where your bullies aren't, I mean, there's the cliche where it's like, there's the bully, and that's like the, the guy that picks on everyone. But mm -hmm. often it's it's people that you're close with that are your friends, and it's just young people don't know how to interact with each other. Right. Uh, no, no, that's true. That so is it's just true. these that girls bullying each thing. other. Yeah. But also still friends. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I watched The Wood for the first time. I saw you liked my letterbox review. Have you seen that? Yeah, I've seen that a bunch yeah. of times. Omar yeah. Epps, Tay Diggs, Coming of Age. Yeah, nice. The, the, it's about a group of friends before one of them gets married, and they mm -hmm. uh, flash back to their, their early years in uh, Inglewood. Yeah. Uh, again, great sense of time and place. And mm -hmm. amazing... I guess great uh, coming of age movies have to have good soundtracks, or I guess that's a thing that happens when uh, yeah. you set stories in the past. Music brings up that time when they're transitioning between the timelines. They have the close up on the on the records on the vinyl with the needle dropping, and then just the circle of the record transitions into the next uh, segment. And it's just perfect, and it's like yeah. you use music to transport you back to a time sometimes like you yeah. have those songs from your childhood where it's like you have that linked with an experience and i thought this movie brought that out real well also it's fucking hilarious it's really fucking funny it's so it good. is it's so funny yeah it's so funny might be my favorite tay Diggs. yeah i don't know nice what else do i like from tay Diggs? yeah it's yeah, it might be Stella, my favorite Tay Diggs. Stella got her groove back. Uh, yeah, I haven't watched that Brown yet. Brown Sugar. Brown Sugar, oh, yeah, same okay, director. Some I gotta watch got that some... next. Yeah. Um, yeah, for some... It's, uh, the Woods directed by Rick Family, Famiyua. I don't know mm -hmm. how to say his last name. He directed Dope, and for some reason I thought Dope was his first movie. Uh, so it's exciting that now I get to go back. Uh, the Wood, great. I think it was... I think The Wood was his first one, and an excellent debut. Yeah, um, it's interesting that it's take that was 1999 and it's taking for 2020 that now he's going to be, you know, he's working closely with Disney. I think he's getting a Star Wars movie or series. Oh, man. No, I, know, okay. I know he directed a couple of episodes of Mandalorian. Uh, or maybe he's doing Marvel. I don't know. But mm -hmm. he's, he's getting commercial work now, which is cool. Yeah. Hopefully he doesn't lose. Um, the edge that makes his, uh, I guess I've only seen Dope in the Wood, but both those are great. Mm -hmm. Two great coming of age movies. Yeah. Yeah, I love the Wood. I love the Wood. There's so many like memorable scenes in there. Uh, like this, the scene where he goes, he gets uh, deer 
to touch the girl's butt, his, his crush butt, and he touches it, and then she beats the crap out yeah, of him. Yeah, yep, yep. <laughs> and then he has to deal with her brother. Like, there are, like, major consequences for him. <laughs> yeah, nothing that happens in that movie is easy for the main character. <laughs> Just, like, any any shit that can happen does happen. <laughs> yeah. But they, they have each other. They come out the other side. Yeah. And, uh... Yeah, it's hilarious, but also really strong, dramatic uh, moments. Mm -hmm. Which, you know, I love. That, uh, one other movie I watched for the first time, Real Women Have Curves from 2002, starring America Ferreira, who was excellent in general and in this. Um, this movie is very similar to Lady Bird. It hits a lot of the same beats, mm -hmm. with a big difference being that it's about, it's not about a skinny white girl, <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. A, a, a bigger Latina, and uh, so there's some cultural specificity to that. And for 2002, really, uh, I think the the body positivity messages really hold up, and some uh, pretty touching scenes of women talking about their bodies and. And what they love about them. She mm -hmm. she was just a great character. And yeah. uh, they did the whole uh, drama between the, the daughter and the mother. And the daughter wants to go to college. And then the mother stops talking to the daughter, which we'll get to with Lady Bird. Um, yeah. But this has, like, even more depth to it because it's like she's the first one in her family to go to college. Her parents don't even want her to attend school. Mm -hmm. Um yeah. Was, I think this was, was like great. her first role, right? This is awesome. the first this was like the first time I ever saw America. I think I saw it back in 2002 and oh. I haven't watched it since. So, I can't say much on it, but I remember liking it a lot. Yeah. And liking yeah, the body positivity and just like how she felt about her body and how she like, you know, grew to love her body in the end. Yeah, there's a scene with her and uh, the women she's working with where uh, she starts, like, taking off her shirt and they, like, go through, like, they all, like, get, like, down to the, <laughs> to the basics to, like, show off, like, stretch marks and stuff and, and why they love their body still. Yeah. And it's, yeah, I don't know, um, really impressive, especially for 18 years ago. It's a shame more movies aren't like that. I mean, they, they touch on uh, beauty uh, standards or expectations in Lady Bird, just with her like uh, comparing herself to women in magazines, but it definitely doesn't have the same effect. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, then I rewatched a couple of my favorite coming of age movies including moonlight but also juno which was another dvd i inherited from my sister but mm -hmm. unlike bridget jones's diary i'm not going to give you're this gonna one keep up. it oh it's better than i remember i've been wanting to rewatch it since we uh saw jennifer's body which is also written by diablo cody mm -hmm. um yeah the it's it's really funny <laughs> and like the the emotional stuff works the the quirkiness like that's the thing that lasts when you like think back to Juno is like the hamburger phone and she says for shiz and like Yeah and Sarah says wizard and it's just like uh ridiculous. But it's I don't know. It's a lot of personality, but I like it and it works for me. Mm -hmm. It was definitely benefited because I started watching it after I finished rewatching Boyhood in which the main character has almost no personality. So it was kind of nice switching to Juno to be like, okay. Okay, yeah. <laughs> Here we go. Though in Boyhood, I think it, it still works because it's supposed to be kind of vague. You, you're supposed to be able to project stuff onto the character. Um, mm -hmm. Boyhood, I think I've seen half a dozen times, and it still has this... Um, overwhelming effect on me by the end of the movie just the accumulation of watching these actors grow up over 12 years and it being w woven into the movie 
narratively, it has suffered a little bit with time, in my estimates. Um, it's like almost three hours long. Ooh. And, like a lot of it is like, yeah, that's life. Sometimes stuff doesn't happen. Um, and it's like when Ethan Hawke shows up, he just brings, he just, the movie completely comes to life, but he's not in it the whole time because he's like the, the absent father. All right. Uh, he, Patricia Arquette oh, is also excellent. Definitely deserved that Oscar. Uh, the, just the, the kid just, <laughs> he's just, just, he becomes an annoying weirdo. And it's like knowing and you Richard, really get to see him grow up into that. Yeah, knowing Richard Linklater, I'm sure he was hoping this kid was going to grow up to be a baseball player <laughs> based <laughs> on his other movies about baseball players <laughs> or like musicians. But no, it's mm -hmm. just like an emo photographer. <laughs> uh, and it's very Texas and it's very hetero masculinity. Mm hmm. So it's hard to tell if it knows what it's doing with that. Because there's like a lot of moments where, similar to Moonlight, he, the character is bullied, uh, called a faggot and bullied. Unlike Moonlight, there's no part of the movie that suggests that he is actually gay. Right. Um, so it's kind of just like, oh, I got called gay. And that's like the... That's, it. that's the yeah. extent of it. Yeah. Okay. But yeah, it definitely presents a lot of male characters as just pigs, which is pretty accurate. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, that's boyhood. <laughs> also, was that also? it? Also? No, I, that, that might have been it. That might have been it. Did I watch anything else? But that was it. That yeah. was it? That was it. All right, nice. <laughs> so nice, you nice. Me. If you would. <laughs> If you would recommend one one movie out of those eight for me to watch, which one would you recommend? I mean, Moonlight, right? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> you would love one Moonlight. I haven't seen, right? Um, hmm. Wait, you haven't seen Juno? No, I've seen Juno. Okay. I've seen it. I've definitely. So I guess it is between Boyhood, The World of Us, and Almost Famous. Then, yeah, I'm I'm not gonna recommend Boyhood because it's long and very very white, very very white in Texas, Texas white. Fair. Yeah. Fair. Uh, so I'm yeah I'm not, I'm not sure you would enjoy that. Um, I mean Almost Famous is also very white, but it's not like pretending to be universal. Mm-hmm. Um. Yeah, I'm gonna go almost famous. It's more fun okay. than most of us. Nice. World of us is very right. just this very quiet drama. Though I guess you like those sometimes. Yeah. But no, almost famous has some some fun performances in it. No, nice. I don't think oh, I mentioned yeah. Kate Hudson. She's excellent in that movie. Also, yeah, she's on the cover. She's yeah. like, yeah. yeah, she's Penny Lane. <laughs> is she the star of the movie? Like, is she like? She's the, the famous one? she's the female lead. Okay. What star is this kid? That kind of, I don't know. Is he famous? Oh, I don't even know if I've seen him in anything else. Okay. Also, Billy Crudup is in it, and he's really good. Okay, that's it. So let's, right. um, let's play the trailer for Lady Bird. I hate California. I want to go to the East Coast. I want to go where culture is, like How New in the York, world did I raise such or at least snob. Connecticut or New Hampshire, where, where writers live in the get woods. Get into those schools anyway. Mom, you should just go to City College. You know, with your work ethic, just go to City College and then to jail and then back to City College and then maybe you'd learn to pull yourself up and not expect everybody to do everything. <laughs> Lady Bird, is that your given name? Yeah. Why is it in quotes? I gave it to myself. It's given to me by me. Lady Bird always says that she lives on the wrong side of the tracks, but I always thought that that was like a metaphor. But there are actual train tracks. What she did was very baller. It was very anarchist. Put the magazine back! <laughs> 
She has a big heart, your mom. She's warm, but she's also kind of scary. You can't be scary and warm. I think you can, your mom is. So, you're not interested in any Catholic colleges? No way. I want schools like Yale, but not Yale because I probably couldn't get in. <laughs> you definitely couldn't get in. Does mom hate me? If you're tired, we can sit down. I'm not tired. You were dragging your feet. You are so infuriated. Please stop yelling. I'm not yelling. Oh, oh it's God. perfect. Do you love it? You both have such strong personalities. When is a normal time to have sex? You're having sex? I'm ready. Just wanted it to be special. Why? You're gonna have so much unspecial sex in your life. We're afraid that we will never escape our past. Whatever we give you, it's never enough. It's never it enough. It is enough. We're afraid of what the future will bring. We're afraid we won't be loved. You can't do anything unless you're the center of attention. We won't be liked. Yeah, well, you know your mom's tits, they're totally fake. She made one bad decision in 19. Two bad decisions. And we won't succeed. I want you to be the very best version of yourself that you can be. What if this is the best version? What I'd really like is to be on Math Olympiad. But math isn't something you're terribly strong in. That we know of yet. Lady Bird is a 2017 American coming-of-age comedy drama written and directed by Greta Gerwig in her solo directorial debut. Nice debut. Yeah, very strong debut. Uh, she like co-directed an, an indie movie years before this. Is also married or not married uh, in a long-term romantic partnership with Noah uh, Baumbach. Baum Baumbach. Baumbach. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and they, you know, she co-wrote Francis Ha and Mistress America with him. He directed. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's not really a surprise. Also, she got a. I don't know, it's only $10 million budget. For some reason, I thought it was made for more money. Mm. It feels like an expensive indie movie. But, I mean, yeah, it's A24. Got yeah, it's a lot of A24 coming of age. Uh, this was your first time watching it, correct? Yeah, yeah. This, I feel uh... like it was a running joke for a while that like <laughs> I was going to force you to watch Lady Bird. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, I, it finally happened. It, yeah, it um, finally happened due to the podcast. Finally watched it, it. Was it torture? <laughs> uh, yeah, no, it wasn't torturous at all. <laughs> it was, it was, it was quite n nice. It was a weird little sandwich of a, of a watching experience because of how we watched it. <laughs> mm. Um, but yeah, I definitely enjoyed it, and there were certain parts that clicked with me as oh. a viewer yeah sure yeah you, I was you were thinking like, it was going to be unrelatable yeah 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 Quirk, quirky white girl 2002 2002 yeah all right but not um, yeah i saw it in theaters and cried and rewatched it several times and cried. Uh, this mm -hmm. week was the first when I was rewatching it to take notes. I think was the first time I watched this movie without crying. Mm -hmm. So I definitely got teary during the airport scene, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. like airport scene scenes tend to do that. Yeah, like someone running through the airport, like <laughs> running out of time, trying to see someone or catch someone. Like that's a good like emotional like um, invoker evoker like mm -hmm. you know what I mean like it really gets like it stirs you up because you're like oh my goodness is it are they gonna catch him in time or are they like what's gonna happen mm -hmm. you know yeah but it was it was a quick scene mm -hmm. it's a very quick scene I think the movie of quick I'll, scenes I'll, yeah I think that's maybe my biggest. Uh, criticism of it is oh. that it just it's it's very quick 
it doesn't wow. like sit long enough with some of the actors that I would like it sit with a little bit mm. longer. Uh, but other than that, I, you know, it was it was an it was a it was a home run. No, oh, I like the pacing. I think it it zips by, uh, and it's just generally fun throughout the whole time. And then it takes some detours where it just gets pretty emotional. Yeah, and there was some like I wanted some like longer moments of like the mom hmm. yeah just you know just just a little bit like longer on the mom like it was like one scene real quick where she was like watching her sleep but it was like so yeah. quick that i couldn't i couldn't even tell what she was thinking she just looked at her and i was just like okay well i i guess i can come to the conclusion that she's watching her daughter sleep in a loving way but it doesn't it doesn't stay there long enough for 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 me to actually see that well it, we'll get to that scene it is right yeah. after she sews the dress and folds it and puts it on her daughter's bedroom yeah. but yeah we'll get into uh how mary and mcpherson uh shows her love her love language which mm-hmm. is care i guess all right, let's start. Let's start. Yeah. Uh, we start with a quote from Joan Didion, the writer from Sacramento. Anybody who talks about California hedonism has never spent a Christmas in Sacramento. I forgot about this quote when I when I picked this for Thanksgiving week, because there is a Christmas scene as well as a Thanksgiving scene. So uh, yeah, it's a bit of both. Yeah, it's not really either, but <laughs> <laughs> it covers the whole year. Yeah. But yeah. Definitely have a an image of California, and this movie sets uh, sets out to dispel the rumors, at least in terms mm-hmm. of Sacramento, which is a pretty unglamorous uh, city. All right. We open on Lady Bird and Marion sleeping, mother and daughter sharing a bed, face to face, kind of like mirror images. Very peaceful. Very nice. The most peaceful those two will be for the whole movie is just in the beginning when they're both unconscious. Yeah. (laughs) And like a a, little, just like a little bit of that car ride when they were both um, the next scene where they're listening to the, the grapes of wrath. Mm -hmm. They're listening. They're finishing up that audio book and they're both like crying. Mm hmm. And they're both sharing in this experience, but then the experience is over, and the mom kind of wants to just sit and 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 that feeling. Like but you. Lady Bird, <laughs> yeah, like yeah, she wants to sit in it just a little bit longer. But Lady Bird is like, nah, we, we, we play some music. We're gonna move on to mm-hmm. the next thing, and that's the first bit of conflict, and it just escalates from there. Yeah, she just wants her daughter to sit with it, but then her daughter like, makes a fuss and like folds her arms. And there's this look that she gives her daughter where she realizes, like, yeah, she's agreeing, but also she's being such a brat. Yeah. <laughs> um, and, it, yeah, that comes out. So we learned that they were um, on a college road trip, visiting colleges. Yeah. Um, we learned that it's 2002. Yeah, I like how they just put that in there. The only great thing about 2002 is that it's a palindrome. Yeah. Uh, Lady Bird wants to live through something, and she wants to be where culture is. And, yeah, uh, she's like just New York. Looking at the green grass on the other side. It's, yeah. It's her whole deal. Mm-hmm. She's a dreamer, and her mom is, like, a realist. Mm-hmm. Like, too real. Yeah, just to always the point worrying where about she's money. Just, yeah, she's kind of like putting her daughter down, kind of mm-hmm. like, you know, I don't think you're good enough for New York or like for the New York schools or she's like putting her down. Like, I don't think you're good enough. And also, we don't have the money. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and she uh, she doesn't call her Lady Bird. Actually, mm-hmm. she calls her Christine. Right. And she just keeps on yapping and lady bird is like hey call me lady bird like you said you would and she doesn't she just keeps on talking but like in this like negative tone and so lady bird just she just tucks and rolls out of the car <laughs> yep and then the next scene is 
or the next shot is just it cuts to hot pink cast that says "fuck you, mom" on it. <laughs> yeah. And then we get we get our opening credits, and we just start moving. Uh, the uh, opening credits, we get little glimpses at um, Lady Bird's life at Immaculate Heart or Immaculate mm-hmm. Fart, as Lady Bird calls it, because she is yeah. not a fan. Do you remember uh, doing the Pledge of Allegiance every day at school? I remember doing it in like. It's so fucked up like that we had to do grade, that. First grade, second grade. Yeah, yeah, I remember. Yeah, that's a really fucked up thing that we had to. It is every day. Let's indoctrinate our children by making them pledge allegiance to to the Amer- U.S. flag. Yeah, that stopped in high school though. Like, I didn't have to do it in high school. Mm-hmm. I remember. I don't know about you. I, I can't remember. If we did, I probably didn't pay attention to it. I was probably okay. finishing up my homework for that day. <laughs> <laughs> True. Uh, we get to see a bit of the election speeches for class president. Mm-hmm. Uh, Lady Bird is running. We don't see Lady Bird's speech, though. <laughs> no. Which is, uh, you know, you can... Uh, dream about what Lady Bird said. Apparently, uh, the original script was, like, super long and she cut it down significantly. So I imagine... There was a speech. Greta Gerwig has somewhere Lady Bird's speech. Yeah. We see some of her classes. She takes Spanish and math and, uh... I don't know, faith. Whatever class you take at Catholic schools with a, with a nun. Yeah. Probably church period. I guess, because they were all in there, and, and the preacher was preaching. Yeah. yeah. And we're, we're uh, indirectly introduced to Julie just because she's by Lady, Bird's, by Lady Bird's side in all these scenes. It's implied that they're close friends, played by Beanie Feldstein. Mm-hmm. Opening credits end with a meeting with Sister Sarah Joan, who mm-hmm. is... Uh, Disturbed with Lady Bird's election posters because it's pretty a, cool po- posters. Yeah, bird head on a human on a human body or vice versa. Yeah, she explains that she doesn't have any intention of winning. She just does it as a tradition. Yeah, every cause year because she, she's a quirky main character. Yeah, <laughs> uh, she's encouraged to join theater arts theater arts because of her performative streak. Yeah. And Lady Bird was like, how have I been here for four years and not known that we do a musical and a, and a play uh, in the fall, in the spring? And, you know, the sister's just like, well, you haven't been, a, you know, an active member of this community. Right. Yeah. Yeah, it does her own thing. I just wanted to stop us for a second just to point oh. out. For the people watching, they can see I'm, I'm drinking from a Coca-Cola cup, and uh, it is, in fact, Coca-Cola. Just want to let you know, the uh, intense product placement in last week's Two Can Play That Game definitely had an effect on me. <laughs> and yeah. I bought Coca- I bought two liters of Coca-Cola. You bought a big, yeah, a nice one. <laughs> not, not, the, not a can. Yeah, no, just like the movie wanted me to. <laughs> years later, 19 years later. Yeah, it was a good investment on Coca-Cola's part. Okay, uh, back to Lady Bird. Next scene is Lady Bird signing up for the auditions, uh, mm-hmm. along with Julie. Uh, mm-hmm. Lady Bird signs up as Christine, quote, Lady Bird, Mixed Pearson, and Julie signs in as Julia, quote, Julie uh, Steffens. Yeah. And uh, there's a disagreement about whether or not Julie needs to be in quotes. And it's really just Lady Bird wanting to be special. Yeah, she wants to be different. She's got the, the dyed hair and the, the attitude and the, the nickname that she gave herself. Yeah, a nickname that she actually just wants to be her name. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I can see why she's like kind of like upset with Julie. Because Julie is like, it's not the same thing. Yeah, like like Julie would be like a shorthand. Lady Bird is like a stage name. It's completely different. Yeah, but it yeah. makes sense that Julie would want to have Julie on the audition sheet because that is the name that she goes by, not Julianne. Yeah. 
Uh, yeah, I don't know. Uh, then the next scene is after school. Then, uh, yeah, they're at uh, her brother's, uh, Miguel's job. Uh, first, there's a little sequence, just because it does move really fast, but and it's, okay. it's quick, but we have the sequence of Julia and Lady Bird walking around uh, the neighborhood called the 40s, which are mm-hmm. uh, very large houses. And they stop in front of a, a large blue house and imagine what their lives would be if they lived in this giant house. Yeah. And how and they would have friends over after school <laughs> all the time. Yeah. Just picturing their lives. Uh, if they, they, if their they lives had money. Were different. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and all this is, I just, I think this is the only time I'll bring it up. Just John Bryan's score for this movie. In this scene, especially, it's either an oboe or, or a clarinet, but I just love it. I just love it. Um, and I think John Bryan's a really talented composer. And also his, his posthumous Mac Miller album that came out earlier this year is definitely one of my favorites of the year. Oh, that's this guy. Yeah, that's this guy. He did oh. arrangements on late registration as well. Uh, and he scored Lady Bird. <laughs> nice. And a couple other movies. So yeah, and then we meet Miguel and Shelley, uh, Lady Bird's brother and his live-in girlfriend at the grocery store where they work Mm -hmm. and uh lady bird and and jules are uh just being annoying teenagers yeah reading the magazines and yeah just yeah being in the way kind of yeah miguel's yelling at yelling at her and then shelly's just giving this death stare yeah (laughs) Um, they're just being (laughs) inconsiderate and then that scene is uh immediately followed up with a scene of showing how Marion is the exact opposite. We see her compassion and empathy in the form of her uh, giving a gift to a co-worker who is a new father. Yeah. And then Maybe something this, she made. Yeah, there's this cute thing where she's, like, leaving, and she's saying to him, uh, okay, so long. I mean, later. Like, to try to use, like, his language. It's just yeah. cute. They definitely... Um, we only get to spend a little bit of time with Marion, as you pointed out, but I think I, I feel like there's so many details in all of her little pieces that just give a sense of her life. And in this mm-hmm. next moment, you just have her driving home, uh, just taking in the sights of Sacramento while the yeah. song plays. Um, and then the song ends immediately when she parks outside her house and slams the door. It's like on the door slam, the music stops. And mm-hmm. it's kind of like you get the sense that that drive was really Marion's only moment of peace in her yeah. day. Oh, yeah. The, the song stops and she slams the door and then she's yeah in the house where she's uh, taking on mostly every role. We do meet Larry McPherson, mm-hmm. played by uh, Tracy Letts. Something I like about, I mean, she's only done two movies now, but with Greta Gerwig's casting, she does this thing where she'll cast these guys that usually play these very powerful men uh, very intimidating uh, actors or characters that these actors usually take on. But with mm-hmm. Tracy Letts in this and uh, Chris Cooper in Little Women just being a complete softy, uh, yeah. I like how she uh, casts against type. Because Larry is just a, a sad sack. He is. He is. Yeah. Understandably so. Um, I figured the bathroom is also a place where you can get a moment of privacy Mm -hmm. um, because they're both in there. Mom and dad are both in there. Yeah, it's cute. She's reading the paper on the toilet while he brushes his teeth. Yeah. Talking about uh, someone they knew who died in their their 40s or something. Yeah, way too young. Yeah. And also Um, they question whether uh, Miguel and Shelly are having sex on the sofa. Yeah, Larry says, oh yeah. (laughs) Oh yeah. (laughs) And they just laugh about it. They're cool parents. Yeah. Even if Lady Bird doesn't see it, which she doesn't. Mm-hmm. So the next nope, scene is breakfast, and Lady Bird is just complaining about her mom's eggs and also yeah. not being nice to Shelly, who's upset because she thinks Lady Bird doesn't like her. Um, yeah. But also, they're trying to be vegan. Like, Miguel and right. Shelly are trying to be vegans. That's why they got the soy milk, but they wear uh, vintage leather jackets. Yeah, but they're vintage, so... <laughs> they're not participating. Yeah. Exactly. Definitely, definitely. A lot of the characters in this movie uh, are shown to be hypocrites. And I like that because uh, that's what humans are. We have these values 
and the uh, ideas of ourselves and then sometimes our actions contradict that yeah uh now uh dad's going to be driving lady bird to school mm -hmm. listening to hand in my pocket by Lana more set which she wrote in 15 minutes and larry can believe it he said yeah <laughs> he said yeah believe that i believe it um she asks her dad um she makes an inquiry about uh her dad helping her fill out financial aid forms yeah, to uh, and not, to, not to tell mom that she's doing it. Yeah, her mom wants her to stay in state, mm -hmm. barely afford in state tuition as it is. But Lady Bird has bigger dreams. Yeah, and her dad agrees. And if it, yeah, if anyone's gonna help her, it's gonna be her dad. Mm -hmm. uh, and then Lady Bird has him stop the car about a block away from school so that she can walk and not be dropped off by her dad because she's probably embarrassed by him and their car. Yeah. Yeah. And then we uh we meet Julie's uncle Matt who is not his, a real uncle, just something no. she's trying out. Just yeah. just the guy who plays David Wallace in the office dating Julie's mom. Yeah, that's a weird that's a weird one to call your mom's boyfriend <laughs> uncle. Yeah. Yeah. Like it's not even close. Yeah. Uh he makes Julie lunch, but she gives it to Lady Bird, who yeah. then has two lunches. Uh, and then they both complain about their weight. Yeah. So, so yeah, it, there's this movie talks a little bit about like the the thoughts that go through teenage girls' minds in terms of their bodies, but it doesn't. It's not it's not body positive at all in the way that no. real women have curves is. Mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> but we are introduced to the character of Jenna Walton. Uh, the the hot popular girl, rich mm -hmm. hot popular girl with a giant car like a yeah. cube was like it a, a Land Range Rover? Rover Range Rover yeah yeah, yeah. a gas um, guzzler yeah <clears throat> um and they're talking about how they heard she has a tanning bed in her house we should try yeah. tanning yeah they yeah they're not want to be her they want to be her yeah yeah they're not speaking negative on her besides no. maybe her car. But yeah, no, they they definitely want to be her. Yeah, yeah. Her next is uh, one of my favorites. It's Lady Bird and Jules eating. Uh, what are they called? Communion wafers. Yeah, communion crackers, wafers, crackers. Yeah. Yeah, and they're uh, just talking about masturbation. Yeah. And they're it's shot because they're like lying down on the carpet with their legs against legs the wall. Yeah. So it's shot from above, so they're like upside down uh, with the carpet as the backdrop. I just like that composition. Mm -hmm. uh, and then yeah. there, yeah. Uh, and then a girl walks in. And she's like, <laughs> yeah, she's like, you're not supposed to eat the crackers, and they're like, it's not consummated, <laughs> consecrated, yeah, consecrated. Yeah, then it's not Jesus yet, so it's okay. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny that these the the, the body of Jesus is just in <laughs> a container. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, then it's auditions for the musical. Which, yeah, which start with a kid singing "Being Alive," which is funny because the movie Noah Baumbach made afterwards, uh, "Marriage Story," features Adam Driver singing that same song at the end, but in earnest. But in oh. Lady Bird, it's just like dumb high schoolers trying out for a play. <laughs> Right. This is one where I especially like the editing because we don't see anyone's full audition. It's just, uh, I'd say, less than 10 seconds each. Uh, yeah. Just clips. Uh, we Lady, see enough? Yeah, Lady Bird's song is very goofy. She prepared a whole thing. Yeah. And she, <laughs> and she did great, too. I was like, oh, I want to see more of that. Like, she. Oh, uh, really? Like, yeah, I think she did she great. She was into I, it. <laughs> I, yeah, she was definitely like committed. The, the, the scene performing. wasn't great. <laughs> the voice was funny. Mm -hmm. um, and then it's contrasted with uh, Julie's, who isn't as showy, but uh, pretty touching performance, mm -hmm. which is uh, she's like visibly uncomfortable on stage, like fidgeting with her fingers, but still singing beautifully. Yeah, and uh, it's an acapella. Like she mm -hmm. didn't sing the piano at all. So. True. And I like the, the reaction shot to kind of show the audience Julie's talented is uh, with uh, Father Leviage played by 
the great Stephen Henderson. Yeah. Uh, his, it was nice to see him. Yeah, he, it's this reaction shot where his face just like softens like very mm-hmm. quickly. I he has a very minor character in this movie, but one of my favorite performances. Probably like one of my favorite like minor character performances in a movie. Yeah. Uh, partly the way it's written, and also definitely Stephen Henderson brings so much warmth to it. Mm-hmm. Uh, other notable addition is Danny, played by uh, Lucas Hedges. Yeah. Singing Giants in the Sky. They're all singing Stephen Sondheim songs. They're trying out for a Sondheim play. And yeah, the reaction shot for this is Julie and Lady Bird both looking at each other like, oh, who's this guy? Oh, yeah, who's this guy? Who's this cutie? This this voice. Yeah. The stage presence. Yeah, it's exciting for them because they go to the all-girls school, but the theater is done as a partnership with the, the boys. Yeah. At Xavier. Mm-hmm. Uh, so then we cut to Lady Bird writing Danny on her wall. Yeah. <laughs> Super quick shot. Just she writes Danny on the wall. There's this music like bells or something. And then we just hear Marion yelling to turn off her lights and go to bed. Yeah. Yeah. And, and Julie next, got the lead. Mm, yeah. The next scene is uh, the casting list. Mm-hmm. And uh, I knew this was how ha- it would happen. Uh, yeah. Where I thought I was like, like Lady Bird did good in her audition, but she only got put in the chorus. Mm-hmm. Yeah. When we yeah. got put in the chorus, because everyone who auditions gets a role, pretty much. Yeah. Uh, Lady Bird's jealous that Julie gets to be romantic with Danny on stage, even though Julie says it's really my only chance. Yeah, she's like, yeah, she's yeah, it's, it's probably my only chance. <laughs> Julie's such a sweetheart. Um, and Lady Bird's just mad. She crosses Christine out on the list, writes really big Lady Bird, and then storms off. Yeah. And I, I like this little moment we get. We just are left with Julie just for like a couple seconds where she just looks at the cast list again and like puts her hand on it to just like yeah. take it in. Yeah. It's a sweetheart. Yes. Then we're back at the grocery store. Yeah. Lady Bird wants to buy a magazine because she wants to read it in bed. Uh, but Marion says that's that's something rich people do. We're not rich people. Yeah. So, she so she's actually. It. Yeah, she's actually going to steal it. We see her putting it in her shirt. Mm-hmm. And then as she's doing that, someone's like, stop. So she's thinking she's been caught. Yeah. And she looks over and it's Danny mm-hmm. uh, just messing around with his uh, younger brother. Yeah. Uh, we see a couple of his siblings. We learn he's from a big Irish Catholic family. Lots mm-hmm. of kids. Uh, Lady Bird introduces herself. They shake hands. Yeah. She's very strong. Forward. Yeah, he asks if she lives around here, and she says, "No, I'm from the wrong side of the uh, tracks." The tracks. Uh, <laughs> it's what? Yeah, and he <laughs> says, uh, "For the play, he wants his hair, his character's hair, to be curly like Jim Morrison." And Lady yeah. Bird says, "Yeah, that's a great idea," and then runs to Miguel at checkout to ask who Jim Morrison is. Yeah. And when when he says it's the lead singer of the Doors, Lady Bird says. I knew that. Yeah, I knew that. Um, so the next day, she, unless I'm skipping something. No, just like I at probably... checkout, Marion's just amazed at how expensive the bill is. Oh, yeah. Employee discount, which I'm sure is something you can relate to as someone discount at a grocery store. <laughs> Yeah. 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 You'd be like, yeah, this is with the discount. Yeah. Like, <laughs> right. <laughs> Uh, theater games is the next thing I have. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, some just, ma, just some moves, um, yeah. some and all that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And then uh, they play first one to cry wins. Yeah. And it's uh, it's Father Leviach who ends up winning. Cause yeah. Takes yeah. No, no time. time. Yeah. And I wrote down something the, is right on his chest. Yeah, I wrote down the the line that follows this scene because it's another one of my favorites. Mm-hmm. It's, uh, it cuts to Danny and Lady Bird and some other girl, some other classmate, uh, just sitting on a ledge outside. 
And the, the girl says, I heard that before he became a priest, he was married and had a son named Etienne who died at 17 of a drug overdose, which maybe was a suicide. But my mom says same difference if you're that careless with your life. And then it's beep, beep. Oh, that's her. Yeah. Gotta go. Bye, guys. <laughs> yeah. Just how, like, yeah, how quick that is and just how, like, she gets, she's yeah. just repeating her mom. <laughs> yeah, just terrible attitude. Um, yeah. But also reveals some stuff about the character of Father Levayich. All of the the uh, the minor characters, or a lot of them, um, start out as just like two dimensional jokes, but then over the course of the movie, are even just in little ways, just like deepened, mm -hmm. just with some some little background that we get, and I like that about this. Uh, so now Danny and Lady Bird are going to flirt. The, the, the version of flirting. Okay. Yeah, she, she gives him a roller set. Yeah. For his hair. Yeah. Uh, I, I just then, wrote down uh, that Danny's wearing a puka shell necklace because that's very oh. 2002. <laughs> oh, man. I didn't even notice. <laughs> yeah. Um, he shares that he had a dream about right. him and Lady Bird where they rode uh, a carrot, mm -hmm. a flying carrot to Disneyland. And he loves Disneyland. Lady Bird thinks Disneyland is scary. <laughs> she says, I also love it. Well, I think it's scary, but yeah. I love it too. But you get the sense that maybe she doesn't love it. She's just pretending Yeah. To, uh, get a guy to like her. Uh, and then it's math class. And yeah. uh, Julie has a, a crush on Mr. Bruno, the math teacher. Yeah, it's very clear. Because yeah, she's, she's like the only one participating in the class yeah she's pretty into it yeah um, i think we just get the hint of that in that scene and then we cut to homecoming dance which is cowboy themed yeah and uh lady bird and julie are decked out in a uh, western attire and mm -hmm. just going nuts dancing just jumping up and down and just... dancing to the crossroads Roads by yeah. Bone Thugs and Harmony, yeah. which is really funny to me, because <laughs> it's just not like a, it's not a dance song. No. It's a funeral song, you know. You mm. even played at a cowboy social. <laughs> uh, so yeah, they're just going crazy, and then you cut to Jenna Walton and her friends. Who, uh, big contrast, they're just wearing Daisy Dukes and tank tops that say "Save a Horse, Ride a Cowboy," and then their version of dancing is just standing in a circle and they're all swaying. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Lady Bird sees Danny and they dance. And then um the Save the dance, Room for Jesus. Right, yeah. six feet apart. Yeah. Six feet apart. <laughs> uh Lady Bird lies about uh being picked up by her mom. She yeah. had plans to sleep over Julie's house, but she lies to get to spend more time with Danny. And it works because she gets her first kiss. Yeah. It's this cute thing where he says, I still don't know how to use the rollers. So she like plays with his hair and then their heads are close. Yeah. And they kiss. And they just go for it. Yeah. And then there's an adorable she... shot of Lady Bird just running down the street and then screaming in euphoria. Yeah. yeah. Which is then immediately uh, she's taken down a peg when she gets home. Her parents yeah. are not expecting her home that night because she was supposed to sleep over Julie's house. Mm hmm. Um, so she's sneaking in, and we see Marion and Larry are at the table going over finances. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Something very serious. Sobering moment, yeah. And uh, Whatever. Larry says to leave it, but Marion decides she's got to talk to Lady Bird. Yeah, like whatever uh, stress she's feeling because of like their financial status, she like mm -hmm. takes it out on her daughter. Like she just picks a fight. Yeah, uh, for seemingly no away. reason, really. Yeah. Well, she explains herself. Um, she doesn't. She feels very strongly about a, their appearance in uh, the community because yeah, they uh, have less money than other people in their city. Yeah, and, you can't look like trash. Can't look like it trash. Affects your your father's um, potential to get hired. If Yes, he, he lost trash. his... She tells Lady Bird, your father yeah, lost she comes his job. Yeah, about it. can't look like trash. Yeah. And yeah. Lady Bird it just had this great moment and is now just being yelled at by her mom and says, uh, don't you wish your mom ever uh, didn't yell at you? 
and Marion says, my mother was an abusive alcoholic. Kind of yeah. shuts, shuts that conversation down. Yeah, it kind of shuts it down. Like, it could be way worse because it mm-hmm. was worse for me. Like, what I'm giving you is a blessing compared to what yeah. I got. Yeah. So. Next scene no is love, like, tough love. Yeah. Yeah. Next scene is Lady Bird with a college counselor uh, going over her pretty bad grades. Yeah. But surprisingly good test scores. Mm-hmm. So, uh, she might be able to get into some places. Yeah, she's like, like yeah, I want to get into those schools, like Yale, but definitely not Yale because I can't get into <laughs> those schools. And she just laughs at her like, <laughs> yeah, you're definitely not getting into <laughs> Yale. I'm just keeping it real with you. Yeah, yeah, right. Um, very fast clip, just of more rehearsal, right into Danny and Lady Bird's uh, blossoming romance. Yeah. Uh, just as playing, they, playing uh, in a field. Uh, yeah, as they the lay under the stars together, mm-hmm. looking at each other and not the stars for this moment. Um, yeah, she where she him. offers, yeah, she offers um, him to make physical contact with her. Because you can touch uh, my on her, boobs. On her, yeah, you, she's like, yeah, you can touch my boobs. And he's like, you know, I respect you so much that yeah. uh, I'm not going to do that. Yeah, and then it leads into, I respect you so much, you know why? Because I love you. And well, it's just kind of yikes, because yeah, they're just throwing quick. around words that I don't think they fully understand what they yeah. mean. No, but, you know, no, young, no. young love, it's exciting. I'm on mm-hmm. hormones. Yeah, whatever. and she, she agrees. She's like, yeah, I respect you so much that if you had boobs, I wouldn't touch them either. Yeah, and then the next scene just... Starts in the middle of a conversation. Lady Bird just saying, it's normal not to touch a penis. Yeah. And then yeah. Julie has to run off to class. And Lady Bird's left alone. They also name a star. Right. Bruce. Yeah, that's important because it comes back a little later. True. Yeah, they pick a star. And it's not the bright one. It's the it's the one next to the bright one. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so now Lady Bird uh, has some time alone. And she... Sneaks into the math classroom, steals the the grade book, and and dumps it. Yeah, she's a bad girl. Mm-hmm. Trying trying to um, lift her grades to get into college. Yeah, anything she can do at this point. Mm-hmm. Um, in the next scene, uh, mom and Lady Bird are uh, thrift shopping for a uh, Thanksgiving dress. We learned that Lady Bird is not going to spend this Thanksgiving with her family. She's going to spend it with Danny's. Yeah, Marion's pretty hurt by that. Yeah. It's her last, it's her daughter's last Thanksgiving, and she's spending it with some other people. Um, yeah, and she's kind of being passive aggressive. Oh, yeah. About her. Are you, are her, you tired? Her, her you're picking up your feet. Yeah, because you're, dra- yeah, you're dragging your you're feet. You're dragging your feet. And she's yeah. just like, why don't you just ask me? Why are you being passive aggressive about it? And yeah. And, mm-hmm. like, they're doing, like, this really, I like this scene because it's, like, mm-hmm. this really, like, quit bickering back and forth where they're kind of talking over each other. And then they find the dress and they're just like, oh, my God, it's perfect. Yeah, right? just on a dime, they're, the bickering ends and they're just agreeing on something. And, yeah, it feels very real. Yeah. Uh, those kinds of relationships. Um, and then we see uh, Marion up at night sewing folding the dress, leaving it in Lady's Bird, Lady Bird's room, and then I wrote in my notes, gazes lovingly at her daughter, but I guess you had to... I guess, uh, yeah, I didn't, I didn't, yeah, I didn't feel it in that moment. I, uh, yeah, she just looked at her, and then it cuts away real quick. Yeah, I think, like, even though Marion's upset that her daughter is not going to be with them for Thanksgiving, she's still staying up late to to sew the dress so she looks good and she folds yeah. it the way that she shows love is uh, the, the thing she does for Lady Bird. She right. right. <clears throat> um, is it a tension? Yes. Okay. Okay. Uh, so now math class, Mr. Bruno doesn't have grades, so he insists that the students uh, tell him what their grades were. Honor system. Yeah. Honor system. Julie undersells her grade. She says A minus. He says, I think it was more like an A. And she says, if you say so. If you say so. And he says, <laughs> I, I see, I know talent when I see it. And she says, yeah. uh, what? she's like, uh, thank you. 
You're welcome. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. This awkward. And then yeah. Lady Bird oversells her grade. She says B when maybe it was a B minus or even C plus. C. Yeah. Yeah. She's like, no, I did well on my last test, so that brings me back up to a B. Mm-hmm. He's like, all right, I'll give you a B. So she gets her grade. Says it, but it's your honor. And then, yeah. Yeah. She has no honor. Now it's Thanksgiving. Happy t- Happy Thanksgiving, folks. Thanksgiving. Yes. Happy Thanksgiving. <laughs> yes. Um, um. Danny shows up to Lady Bird's yeah. house. Mm-hmm. Uh, I just like the, they the welcome dad, him. I like the dad joke of of him saying, "Please call me Mister Larry McPherson." <laughs> yeah. Uh, Lady Bird wants to make an entrance, so Danny has a couple moments with the other members of her family alone. Um, yeah, I love that because uh, Miguel's like, yeah, she wants to make an entrance. She's mad we doesn't we don't have a spiral stair- staircase. Oh, yeah. I can see the moment that she's trying to create mm-hmm. that she's all that moment. Uh, Shelly just whispers her name. She just says Shelly. Danny says what? And then we cut back to Shelly. Shelly, that my name's Shelly. He says okay. That's my name. <laughs> um, Shelly's a and great then he example. Brings up- oh. I was just going to say, ahead. Shelly's a great example of what I was talking about earlier, where for the first few parts, and especially in that moment, she's like in, in danger of just being a complete, uh, just caricature, Tro- just a oh, joke. Yeah. yeah, just the, the quiet goth, goth, goth girl. Kid. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, she does but, develop. But she, she has some scenes later on. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that, uh, yeah, that depth to the character. And uh, Danny mentions how Lady Bird uh, used to say that she's from the wrong side of the tracks. And he thought that she was joking, but then he actually saw the tracks. And then you could see, like, in her face that uh, yeah, Lady Marian, Bird's mom, Marian's yeah, Marion, she's, no, she's not. She's kind of taken yeah. back by that <laughs> comment. Yeah. Because she knows Lady Bird is, like, dead serious about being yeah. from, like, a bad part of mm-hmm. town or whatever. And then Lady Bird comes out. She comes out very quickly. Yeah. Kind of rushes and, and just it's like, yeah, let's go. Uh, turns out Danny's grandma's house is the big blue house in the 40s. It's the house. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, there's a uh, Ronald Reagan poster in the house, and Lady Bird yeah. la- sees it and laughs and says, "Is that a joke?" And he, Danny just says, "No." No. <laughs> like, yeah. yep. Yeah. <laughs> uh, she folds napkins in a special way and feels accepted by that family. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then that night, getting together with her theater friends, driving around singing the songs from their play, being very annoying. Yes. Uh, they smoke a joint and they go to a concert. Yeah. This is where we we meet uh, Kyle, played by yeah. Timothy Chalamet. She she gets on the, the bander. She leaves her eyes yeah, it's on the, him. The, the shot of Kyle on the bass, and then the shot of Lady Bird seeing Kyle, and then yeah, yeah. I was like, uh oh, that yeah, spells trouble. Yeah. Also, Julie's got got uh, the love interest because uh, Mr. Bruno was at the play for some, or at the show for some reason, yeah. and Julie's wondering where's his wife. Yeah, he doesn't have a wife. Yep. Uh, then uh, Munchies hit. And I just love yeah. that it's, it's Real Big Fish playing just ska, which uh, definitely goes with um, high school theater kids smoking weed. <laughs> <laughs> and they're just snickering, watching the microwave. And when Mary walks I in. I really like that shot of them watching the microwave. Mm. Yeah, it's just the microwave meals stacked on each other. <laughs> yeah. And they can't and interact with, with Marion. <laughs> no, yeah, they're giggling so much. He comes in and it's just like, hi, guys. And they're just like, we, we, can't, we can't do this. <laughs> mm-hmm. We can't talk right now. Um, then the friends leave. And Lady mm-hmm. Bird's left outside with Shelly, who's smoking a clove, who tells Lady Bird what a clove is, why it looks mm-hmm. like that. Mm-hmm. And uh, this is like the scene I was talking about earlier because Shelly... Uh, really defends Marion and says, your mom was upset that you weren't there for Thanksgiving. Uh, yeah. She really loves you. I think she's a great woman. She took me in when uh, my parents freaked out about premarital sex. Yeah. Uh, I really admire her. Yeah. So it was great to hear it. We see a bit of it. 
but also what we've seen so far is so much conflict between Lady Bird and, and her mother, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then it is opening night, and my note is, oh, God, it's terrible. <laughs> oh, God, it's terrible. It's you so get, cringy. You get no sense also, that it's going like, to be like that. <laughs> and then it but is. But also, like... I've been in a show like this. With the red, blue, and yellow <laughs> with, solid t-shirts. <laughs> with just like, because like, I did a show we had with solid shirts, but it was like 80s. And so we like cut up the shirts and did like all type of designs. And I was just like, oh my goodness. <laughs> I just got all the feels and just like, I was like, oh, this is so nasty. This is disgusting. But like in the best way, just like nostalgia, yeah. but also like, yeah. Yeah, it's, they're just, it's, you it's, know, it's a bad it's high school. It's real show. high school musical theater, yeah. Which is really funny because uh, it's it's Merrily We Roll Along, which um, Richard Linklater, who did Boyhood and filmed that over 12 years, his next uh, project in a similar vein, he's going to be adapting Merrily We Roll Along, filming it over 20 years, mm-hmm. and it's going to star Beanie Feldstein, who played that role in the show in Lady Bird. <laughs> And is now going to be doing it for real that we won't get to see for 20 years. Damn. Um, so that'll be interesting revisiting this once that comes out. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, yeah. Um, then after, after the show, there's some heartbreak. Uh, Beanie sees, uh, meets Mr. Bruno's pregnant wife, which explains yeah. why she wasn't around before. Yeah. Uh, She's kind of heartbroken, and she goes and sits down to, to next to Father Leviat, who has this moment where he just says, "They didn't understand it. Didn't get it. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't see the vision." Uh, and then you get theater kids just being shitheads at a diner. <laughs> yeah, cast party. Yeah, you know what I mean. <laughs> yeah, there. these were great. Uh, and yeah, they're just throwing fries. I'm just like, oh my shouting, goodness, they're yeah. terrible. Yeah, mm-hmm. someone's gonna have to clean this up, guys. It's not them. No. Uh, there's um, a long bathroom line, so uh, Lady Bird decides to go into the men's room, but yeah. she slings the stall open, and there is Danny making out with a male castmate. Yeah. So then we cut to uh, Julie and Lady Bird both in Julie's car with the front seats back. And the shot is from above, and they're listening to Crash by Dave Matthews Band just in tears because yeah. they both had their hearts broken. Singing out their heartbreak. Yeah. Uh, and then next, next is Small Christmas. Uh, yeah, I have a couple notes before that. Just uh, oh, the next scene, we see uh, the curtain call of, I guess, the next performance. And as a yeah. change, Lady doesn't want to hold hands with Danny as they take their bow. And yeah. then um, that's kind of the end of act one of the movie. And I really like that the act change is punctual with a short sequence of Lady Bird's cast being taken off. There's a very satisfying cracking noise when he like cracks it off and then yeah. followed by a shot of dumping it in the trash can. It's just like crack dump very quickly. And like those sounds just like fresh start. Here's act two. Yeah. Um, and we get the small Christmas. Uh, moisture wicking socks are the bounty. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And the novelty. And everyone's color. being really nice. And it's not, it's not dysfunctional at all. You know, no, it feels yeah. like Christmas, mm-hmm. even though it's small. I like this moment. Uh, the pillow Marion got for her husband says, golfers never diet. They just exist on greens, which is just, it's dumb. But yeah. then it's just cracking up. And she says, it yeah, makes it me makes laugh. laugh. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> It's nice. Um, this whole time, the, the Nutcracker music is playing. And mm-hmm. then the, it continues to the next scene, which is just Lady Bird in her bedroom, sitting in front of the mirror, petting her dog, like probably like picturing herself as like this movie star or like uh, it's just super wealthy woman. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Um, and then there's a knock on her door and she clicks off music and it turns out she was actually listening to the Nutcracker music that we had been hearing. Like that. Uh, and yeah. it's her dad. She knew it was her dad because mom doesn't knock. Yeah. And he's uh, and giving her the filled out financial aid applications. Yeah, and the best Christmas gift. And uh, next scene is her running to the post office to drop her off. While she's doing that, we hear uh, the New Year's Eve countdown. 
And then on Happy New Year, it cuts to uh, Sparklers. Yeah. Which is when I noticed that both of my picks this week feature just white people with sparklers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> which, uh, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's a thing. <laughs> um, now Lady Bird's working at a coffee shop. Yep. And just with the, the pace of this movie, it just zips along. You never have a scene with, like, Lady Bird, you need to get a job or anything. It's uh, just very quickly, quick bit of the manager teaching her how to use the coffee machine. And it's yeah, just, that's okay, enough she's, info. she's working there now. Yeah. And she, she spots Kyle sitting outside reading. Yeah. So she approaches him. Yep. And we know that it, when Lady Bird likes, likes someone, she will walk right up to them so yeah, she walks she's right up to Kyle. yeah and, and starts she, making she conversation hands. yeah hands, holds her hand a little a little long it yeah. lingers a, oh weird you shake hands yeah yeah um she says i saw your band mm-hmm. uh len fonts new and then he le he corrects her new. Le fonts new. <laughs> <Le> fonts new. <laughs> yeah, like real her, quick <laughs> which uh yeah ladybird has a type we didn't mention it danny takes french he originally mm-hmm. wanted the star named Claude because it's French. Yeah. <laughs> so I guess she likes guys that speak French. French. Uh, yeah. She lies about being friends with Jenna because uh, she knows that he's friends with her boyfriend. Yeah. Uh, he says, maybe I'll see you at the deuce sometime. So she says, yeah. Your yeah. manager calls her out for flirting. She says, I wasn't flirting. And he says, I wish you had been. So now uh, Danny is crossed out on the bedroom wall and Kyle is written uh, next to it because that is the new love interest. Yeah. Next so scene. We, uh, talk to, we hear uh, Jenna talking about the first time that she did it with her boyfriend. Yeah, interrupted by an by a emergency phone call from her mom. Yeah. Uh, Lady Bird interjects herself into the conversation, asking, uh, uh, "What was it an emergency?" And she's, or did you end up picking up? And Jenna's like, "Yeah, it was so awkward." And then Julie mm-hmm. tries to enter the conversation, asking, "What's the what was the emergency?" Yeah, and like everyone's like snickerings just completely halt, and it's just like, "Who is like, this?" What? Yeah, like, yeah, like, yeah. Um, turns out the emergency was that her great aunt died. Yeah. Says, Sorry for your loss. And uh, Jenna says, it's okay. She kind of did it to herself. I don't know why you do that if you're already so old, which yeah, is another I line she... that I love. What do you picture yeah. when you hear that line? I don't know. I like, always picture an do? old woman jumping out of a plane. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I always picture that. I mean, it's probably not that, but yeah, it's a fun line. Right. Uh, then uh, sis. Sister Sarah Joan comes by for a skirt check. and Jenna fails. Her skirt is mm-hmm. too short. Lady Bird has a plan to get her back. Even though yeah. Julie says, you like Sister Sarah Joan. And Lady Bird yeah, says, yeah, but, but she's, she's a cunt. cunt. Yeah, but she's just, a cunt. Just disparaging people. She's just trying to, like, yeah, fit in. Friends. Seem yeah. cool. And, yeah, she comes up with this, with this prank. Yeah, it's uh, the same day as the auditions for the spring play, but Lady Bird decides that she's not going to be in it this semester. Yeah. Uh, so instead, she's uh, pranking Sister Sarah Joan by uh, putting J- Just Married to Jesus on her car. Yeah, pretty harmless. Mm-hmm. Uh, her, the scenes with Lady Bird and Jenna after school are intercut with, uh, with Julie at play practice. And there's been mm-hmm. some changes. Father Levayich isn't returning to direct. It's now uh, the JV football coach. Who yeah. Play is a play. He's going to treat it like a playbook. <laughs> like a football playbook with X's yeah. and O's. Yeah. Uh, back in the parking lot, uh, Jenna's asking where, Sir, where, not where, Sir, where Lady Bird lives. <laughs> And she lies, saying that she lives in the 40s in that blue house. And Jenna says, that's where my starter home was. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Um, And so she's like, Jenna's like, hey, do you want to go there after mm -hmm. after school or whatever? for Or for lunch or whatever? And and she's like, actually, no, we should go to the deuce. Try and steer her away from that. Yeah, let's deuce it up. Mm -hmm. So they end up going from one parking lot to another because the deuce is a parking lot, which... um, yeah, a good amount of my high school was hanging out in parking lots also. 
I get that. Um, Mine's was hanging out in the lunchroom or hanging out in the music room, really. Right. Um, Lady Bird has some, some time with, with Kyle. I, it's, I like their, uh, the, like the start of their conversation when they, um, cause Jenna is like, yo, we just pulled a prank on, on the sisters. And then he's like, oh, that's, that's hella tight. Cool. That's hella <laughs> he tight. He says that's hella tight. And she, I forget what she says. And he's like, yeah, I won't snitch on you. And she goes, you better not. Or I'll fucking kill your family. Yeah, he's and she so says it's so like so good and <laughs> so convincing that he's just like, what? Yeah, and then he's like, well, my dad has cancer, so I guess God's doing that for us. Yeah, it just gets worse. <laughs> yeah, for Kyle, the the depth that his character gets is that he has a dad with dying of cancer. <laughs> yeah, Which I guess is thin, but it does uh, suggest. Um, a, a bigger life for this character beyond just being a fuck boy. Yeah. Oh, he's hardcore fuck boy. Oh yeah. He's a very specific kind of fuck boy who, when he gets a uh, lady bird's phone number and learns that it's his parents' phone number, he says, you don't have a cell phone. Good girl. Good girl. Uh, yeah. Government doesn't need to give us tracking devices that we buy it ourselves. And he's dead serious. Too. Convinced they'll be in our brain soon. Yeah. Yeah. So like he's, he, I, I feel like he's dry and insightful and just like he's a real like he's real smart ass kind yeah. of uh then at the cafe uh danny shows up to try to talk to lady bird who avoids him by going out back to take out the trash but he follows her yeah and at first she's real confrontational she's mean she's, yeah she's really upset about it and he is more so scared about mm. being outed by yeah, her. He's from a strict Irish Catholic family. Um, yeah. He's very worried about how he's going to tell his parents that he's gay. Yeah. Uh, very ashamed of himself. Shame. Yeah. Uh, and once he starts crying, Lady Bird softens up and uh, is supportive, gives him a big hug. Yeah. He kind of collapses into her. Yeah. Acting moment. And then, uh, whereas early in the movie, her getting yelled at at the supermarket was followed by Marion being compassionate. And this, this time, it's uh, Lady Bird is being nice to someone and empathetic. Mm -hmm. And then it's followed by Marion. We see that uh, we get a little bit of her at work. She works at the psych hospital. And she's uh, doing an intake with Father Levayich. Mm -hmm. um, is experiencing depression. Yeah, and we don't really get much out of that. Like, we're kind of just dropped in and, like, the end of it, pretty much. Mm -hmm. Or maybe, like, the middle with, like, no details of, like, what he's experiencing or why he's experiencing it. Just get, that he is... You get hints, like, with the line about his son dying of a drug overdose. Yeah. Um... But, like, I don't know if that's, like, the truth to his character that's just like he's like hearsay pretty much we don't get any confirmation yeah no we don't, we don't know exactly character. he's we just know that he's experiencing like, depression yeah he's he's depressed going through it uh next is uh just very quickly ash wednesday again again the ashes and we just hear remember you are dust and to dust you will return which is definitely a what, like a Christian? Did Jesus say that? I don't know. But I like it. I like that line. It's important to remember that we're dust and we'll be dust again. Yeah. Puts things into perspective. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, even if Lady Bird was being very compassionate with Danny earlier, she's still on this uh, this path to just being... Just the worst. Nasty. Yeah, this this next scene. Oh yeah. Um she's she's mad because she doesn't get into uh the only state school she gets into is Davis, which is close and she looks down on. And yeah. She's mad because Miguel got into Berkeley. She didn't even get into Berkeley. 
Yeah. And she accuses him of getting in only because of his race. Yeah. And he says, you're actually fucking evil. And then she screams yeah. right into yeah. the camera. Yeah. Just being a monster. She's a monster. And then, uh, She's terrible. Yeah, and then at Jenna's house party, giant house for Jenna. Mm-hmm. Uh, Cry me a river playing. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, Kyle's in the back smoking his hand-rolled cigarettes. I like that shot of, uh, of of Kyle when he's just, like, in the shadow and he's only being lit by the pool. You, like, mm-hmm. barely see him in, like, in blue. Yeah. Hey, look at that yeah. shirt. <laughs> yeah, I got my, uh, my Elio shirt on. Um, yeah, it's we just... Cool uh, for the party. Some, he's that guy. Yeah, we got some funny lines about how he doesn't want to participate in the economy, economy because he doesn't like money. He doesn't. He's trying to barter. Yeah. <laughs> this guy. Uh, uh, he makes fun of Ladybird's smoking cloves. Says there's fiberglass in it. Yeah, he only does uh, hand rolled. Because oh, of course. <laughs> yeah. And they make out. Yeah. And, uh, in a in a moment of heated passion, Ladybird says, "I don't want to have sex yet." Kyle yeah, says, "No." Had- and then Ladybird says, "I haven't had sex yet." And Kyle says. No, me neither. Um, implying that he also hasn't had sex yet, but he's probably responding just to the first part because mm-hmm. he like he like takes his hands off her for a moment to be like, mm-hmm. no, it's okay, I don't want to. Um, but yeah, she's led to believe that he's a virgin, mm-hmm. uh, and they uh, they end up in a room that uh, houses the uh, the tanning bed. And uh, Lady Bird says, Julie would love this. And then yeah. uh, Kyle says, who's Julie? Because, yeah, she's, uh, she's so far from uh, the social situation she was in in the beginning. Yeah. And now she's in the bathroom, finding Kyle's yearbook picture and taking a bath, doing her yeah. thing. Doing her thing. And she... Uh, she finds some pills. Uh, antidepressants, yeah. Mm-hmm. She uh, uses two towels, which... Marion sees and just she needs to know. She needs to know. It's up her whole day. Yeah. And then they have a, a mother daughter talk. Yeah. yeah, they have a mother daughter talk about uh sex and depression. Uh, yeah, she learns her dad is depressed, and she's like, "Is it because you know he's not success- successful?" And the mom is like, "You know, being su- successful, success." Yeah successful doesn't make you a happy person but she's like yeah but you know but he is sad he's unhappy and he's unsuccessful yeah Yeah, like he's both so yeah uh so now ladybird's hanging out in jenna's pool and they have the uh requisite shot for every contemporary teen movie which is the underwater just teenagers swimming Mm-hmm. It's just all of them. It's in all of them. Uh, water, pools yeah, of water. The the underwater shot. Mm-hmm. I guess once once that got cheap enough to shoot people underwater, I just feel like all the teen movies have it. Um, we get we get a couple lines from Jenna that deepens her character a, a little bit. I mean, we just get to know about her dreams, which yeah. are. Uh, to, to stay in Sacramento, a city she loves, where she wants yeah, to raise she's a not family. Ashamed. Yeah, she's not ashamed of it like Lady Bird is. Mm-hmm. Lady Bird wants to get out of here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Lady Bird says, at, at least go to San Francisco, but Jen says, I don't like hills. Yeah. It's that, it's that simple. Yeah. Uh, then it's math class, and there's an empty desk next to Lady Bird where Julie used to sit. So now uh, Lady Bird's going to confront uh julie who has a new friend darlene i yeah darlene cracks me up this before she's just like why do you want to talk to julie yeah don't talk to julie <laughs> and then lady bird's like uh darlene just let me talk to julie and julie's like darlene stay <laughs> yeah um uh, yeah just like julie just switched on switched class math classes uh because yeah Lady Bird. I don't know. She's hurt that Lady Bird is hanging out. Yeah, she is days. hurt. Yeah, uh, she's like, Lady isn't Bird. Kyle and Jenna enough? And that Lady Bird isn't even in the play, even though she got the role. And yeah. uh, 
she says, there is no role of the Tempest. And Julie says, it's the titular role, which, I mean, they're both right, I guess. They made up the role for, for Lady Bird. Yeah. Uh, then uh, just more Lady Bird being a bad girl speaking out at the abortion assembly. Yeah. Just because something looks ugly doesn't mean it's morally wrong. Yeah. She yeah. kind of, I, I can understand her, like, speaking up, but she kind of does get really disrespectful. Mm-hmm. She definitely crosses the line in which yeah. she's just, just like, yeah, if you if you were <laughs> aborted, then we wouldn't be at this stupid, you, yeah, know, right. you know, meeting or whatever. But it's like, damn, her, her life does have meaning at this point. She is alive. You're talking to a person that is living. You know, yeah. have some compassion, I guess. But right. everybody else is like, even Jenna is like, oh, Jenna hides. Down. Yeah. <laughs> She's like, nope, don't want this. <laughs> Next yeah. scene, suspended. Next scene, yeah, getting yelled at by her mom. Uh, her dad's in the room uh, on the Playing on the solitary. Computer, playing solitaire. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and yeah, we get that. I mean, the all the talk about money kind of comes to a comes to a head where uh Marion is saying, do you know how much it costs to raise you? Everything I do is for you taking double shifts. Your dad's unemployed. Uh, how do you think he feels when you make him drop when you make him drop you off? Uh, yeah. And then uh, Lady Bird gets out that legal pad and says, give me a number. Tell me how much it costs and I'll get very rich and pay you back. But then Marion's like, I don't think that yeah, you'll ever I don't make enough think- money. I don't think that's ever gonna happen. Yeah, just chops it, chops that tree down real quick. <laughs> um, then uh, Lady Bird spends her suspension just watching the news about the Iraq invasion, mm-hmm. <laughs> which uh, I remember watching some of that in two thousand two, trying to wrap my head around that. Uh, turns out it's just oil. It's yeah. just bullshit and oil. Uh, anyway, Jenna shows up at the wrong house, thinking she's popping into Lady Bird's house. Yeah, like, but guess it's, where I am. Yeah, it's really Danny's grandmother's house. Yeah. And she does not like dishonesty. Nope, she's very upset. Um, they are kind of friends? Really not. He says, if you're still gonna be dating Kyle, I mean, I guess yeah. I'll see you around. Yeah. Yeah, that kind of does it for their friendship. Yeah. Uh, it gives her... That's a good character uh, attribute to give to give her. Is like... As she just has, like, a hard line on, like, mm-hmm. dishonesty. Yeah. That's it, yeah. Yeah, another character that could just be a superficial, just the, the rich hot girl, but she gets a little bit... Yeah. A little bit of depth. Uh, more Iraq invasion news coverage as Lady Bird and Kyle watch that in bed before having sex. That's their yeah. foreplay. <laughs> That's their foreplay. She's ready. She's, she's ready, bothered. and she's on yeah. top. Yeah. And <laughs> it's hilarious. Kyle very confidently premature ejacul- ejaculates prematurely, mm-hmm. but with so much confidence. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's over very quickly. Yeah, and he's, he doesn't apologize. He's just like, yep, yeah, I'm, I'm done. Yeah, I'm done. She was like, oh, I was confused. Yeah, he's like, nope, yeah, that's it. <laughs> yeah, that's it. And she's acting all weird because she's giddy about losing her virginity. Yeah, she's very touchy-filly, clingy, mushy. It's just like, we have each other flowers, you know what I mean? Like this this new experience that she's sharing yeah. with this with this guy that she has strong feelings for. And then you, the balls just drop. And yeah. And he's just like, I didn't lose my virginity to yeah, you. Yeah, I didn't lose my virginity to you. And I know because. It's to Cassidy. Yeah. Cassidy? Yeah. And, and Lady Bird's like, you told me you were a virgin. You lied. And he says, I haven't lied in two years. <laughs> yeah. I was like, all oh, this fucking asshole. <laughs> what an asshole. I'm so curious say. what the lie was that he told two years ago that made him take note of that to stop <laughs> lying. I haven't lied in two years. <laughs> I was like, no, you, you definitely were not very clear with her. 
Yeah, though, as I, as I rewatch it, I, I kind of understand where he was coming from, where he started answering her with the first part about, I'm not ready to have sex right now. Mm-hmm. And they were, I don't know. But yeah, definitely a miscommunication. Uh, I don't know. I, I, I don't know. I watched it. I, I thought he did say that he was also a virgin. He, he didn't say those words. He just said, yeah, me neither. Yeah. After yes. she said, oh, yeah. I'm not ready to have sex. I haven't had sex before. Yeah. But, you know. That can uh, yeah, but so he's, yeah. he's thrown off why, about why she's so hurt by this. He thinks she can just decide not to be hurt by it. They're civi- Do you know how many civilians are dying every day in Iraq? Yeah, it really tries to, like, downplay her emotions. And she's like, yeah. be sad about more than one thing. Like, you can be sad mm-hmm. about other things. And, right. You know. He's just like, you know, I don't know. I don't get why you're so mad. You're going to have so much you know, like unspecial, unspecial sex. sex in your life. Yeah. And, and she's she just says, like, who yeah, the fuck is on top for their sex. first time. Yeah. Who the fuck is on top? And also, I thought I was having this experience that was a lie. Mm-hmm. It's just really big. Yeah. That can probably fuck someone up. Yeah. Get their first uh, major sexual experience being like that. Yeah. Uh, Marion picks her up. We oh, also... she she walks downstairs. We get a glimpse at uh the the cancerous father. Yeah. Uh, it's just sad. Yeah. Uh, and and Marion picks her up. She she thought uh, Miguel was coming, but Marion says it was easier for me to come. That's just like a throwaway line, but it's like, yeah, Mar- Miguel probably didn't want to leave, so Marion's just doing more work because. She's the one in the household that takes care of everything and everyone. Yeah. Um, she sees her daughter crying, so she suggests that they do their favorite Sunday activity. This is my favorite scene. Oh, yeah? Yeah, this is it. Oh. This is it. Yeah. Because it's, it's like the, the one time where they're actually nice to each other mm-hmm. while they are awake. Like, truly nice yeah. to each other. Yeah, Marion's is really indulging uh, Lady Bird's uh, fantasies of having more money. Yeah, and I also think that she wants it too. I feel like this is like where we actually see them like connect on something because yeah. um, she also around that to she open would houses, also like. By the way. Yeah, they go to open houses, and but she also stated like she she said I never thought I would be in this house for fifteen years. I mm-hmm. thought we would move somewhere better. Yeah. You know, she also wants better. Right. Yeah. So it's just like this really cute moment of them looking at houses and talking about it and being like, you know, I th- this would be my room. You know, mm-hmm. I would put this in the kitchen. Yeah. And yeah, it's really nice. But it's like no words. You can just mm-hmm. put it together yourself. And it's really sweet. Yeah. Uh, next scene, Lady Bird gets some letters from colleges first two are rejections second one yeah. or third one is a wait list which she celebrates yeah it's good enough for her works. yeah um then her father is at a job interview mm-hmm. uh with the guy who's the friend on that show love just recognize him uh and he's like uh turns out we learned that the company that that laid off larry is now uh closed they went out of business yeah but also, Larry's just really out of place interviewing for this company that, that seems to be like a startup with a lot of young people. Um, yeah, the interviewer doesn't even know how to do what, an interview. Yeah, how to do an interview. He's like, "What do we do next?" <laughs> yeah, he says, he should, "Well, maybe uh, tell me about the position." Yeah. yeah. Um, then uh, he walks out, and Lady Bird was with him, and on their way out uh, to get ice cream or something to cheer them up. Uh, mm-hmm. In walks Miguel uh, with no piercings. We forgot to mention that during the screaming match, uh, Lady Bird yells, and you'll never get a, a job with all those, all that shit in your face. Yeah. And that, that scene ended with Miguel like touching his face, like, uh oh. So now uh, it was referenced earlier that both uh, Larry and Miguel have math degrees. So it makes sense that they'd be applying for the same job, but it's just like a weird moment when they're leaving and Miguel walks in. Yeah. So, so Larry just shakes his son hand, son's hand and says, good luck. Go get him. Mm-hmm. 
And then, uh, really, the the scene that if if anyone is watching this movie and is like lost about like what it's trying to say, the scene kind of clears that up with uh, mm -hmm. Sister Sarah Joan going over Lady Bird's college uh, essay, uh, complimenting Lady Bird on how affectionately she writes about Sacramento. And up until mm -hmm. now, we've only heard Lady Bird complain about Sacramento, but apparently she she wrote about it lovingly in her essay. Yeah, Lieber says, I guess I pay attention. And Sister Sarah Jones says the, the line, don't you think they're the same thing? Love and attention. Attention. Yeah. Yeah. So then. Uh, for, for viewers, maybe that it'll click into place that that's uh, at the heart of the relationship between Marion and Lady Bird. And then it's further exemplified in the next scene with uh, Lady Bird trying on prom dresses. Yeah. Uh, and she says, I just, I wish you liked me. And Mary says, yeah. of course I love you. And she says, but like, do you like yeah. me? Do you like she me? Says, I want you to be the best version yes. of yourself that you can be. And she says, what if this is the best version? And then that face she gives her daughter. Oh, the face like is appalled. brave. Like, you think this is the best? <laughs> like, like, come on, be serious. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, but I, I, I remember that feeling, uh, especially like senior year of high school, kind of thinking I've arrived like this. I, the me that I am now is the me. Like I got here. Uh, you think you 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 got your shit figured out? No, not me. Not me. I knew I had I had a lot uh, a lot of things uh, a lot of growth mm -hmm. uh, to happen with uh, when I was in college. That college was gonna be that moment for me mm. definitely not high school <laughs> yeah i don't know i i didn't picture myself changing that much for some reason just a oh. naivety uh then it's a uh, prom time and kyle is a fuck boy so he's just honking the car from outside <laughs> very different from danny oh yeah oh yeah and as and, uh, uh, the dad is just like uh you're not gonna go out w with a guy that honks and she's like yeah, I think I am. Yeah. Miguel's uh, like... Even you deserve, you deserve better. better. Yeah, even you deserve yeah. better. <laughs> um, yeah, and as she's approaching the car, we can hear uh, Jenna and her boyfriend in the back seat saying, she's weird. Yeah, yeah, she's weird. And then we get, we get in the car, and uh, the scene I was thinking about before when I was referencing characters being hypocrites, because now Kyle apparently has a cell phone. <laughs> Because he's talking on yeah. a cell phone. Yeah, oh, I didn't even, like, peep it. Yeah, yeah that's something I didn't catch until uh, subsequent viewings. But, yeah, dude's got a cell phone. <laughs> uh, they make plans to ditch prom and just go over to the kid's house who's hosting the after party. Uh, Lady Bird says, oh, sure. Yeah. And then uh, the yeah. Dave Matthews Come Band on. song is playing, and Kyle says, I hate this song. And Lady Bird says, I actually really like this song, and... And like in the same breath, the same thought, I do want to go to prom because it's uh, she's OK liking the, the stuff that is seen as uncool because she likes yeah, it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of the movie was Lady Bird just posturing, kind of trying to come off cooler than she is uh, to, you know, not being herself. But now mm -hmm. she's she's accepting that uh, she likes Dave Matthews band and wants to go to prom. Yeah. And she wants to go to prom. Dropped off at Kyle Julie. is actually nice enough to drop her off at Julie's place. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They're just happy to get rid of her. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Julie's place, who is like a like a condominium or an apartment or something, so much smaller than Lady Bird's Lady house. Lady Bird's, yeah, even really, smaller. Really, uh, just hits Not home how ungrateful Lady Bird is. Yeah. Yeah. And like Julie is is sad. Yeah, she's been she's crying. crying. Like, yeah, we don't know why exactly. She says, well, we do because she has we a do. lot. Some people aren't built happy. Oh, yeah. That's her rationalization. She's, uh, yeah. Yeah. It's sad. But Lady Bird makes her happy. Yeah, they, they, they eat snacks. Yeah, they, they eat them. cheese, a whole block of cheese and crackers. They're talking about sex. And uh, yeah, yeah. they decide to go to prom. Yeah, together. Had a dress. Yeah, they go together. They take their pictures together. 
they dance, they dance together. together with the, with the nuns looking. Uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and like, hmm, yeah. what is this? <laughs> Uh, and then we get our last scene with Julie. It's a uh, sunset over over a river by the bridge. A uh, really beautiful shot. And it's uh, we learn that Julie won't be around for the summer because her uh, her biological father came out of the woodworks and uh, wants to spend some time with her. So they have a they have a big goodbye. Yeah. yeah. That's a that's a wrap on Julie. And it's very emotional, the hug between those two friends that then leads into uh, Danny's monologue at the end of The Tempest, which uh, m- appears to be a much better production than Merrily We Go Along. Uh, he's funny, good right? Yeah, good Shakespearean performance. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's great. The, the football coach did this. <laughs> yeah, at the end, the coach stands up and cheers like a, like a touchdown. Yeah! Stitch. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and Lady Bird is there in the audience. Yeah, yeah, supportive. Being supportive, yeah. Friend, and then uh, get graduation. Mm-hmm. She's she's called Christine Lady Bird McPherson, and she gets her diploma. Uh, and they have a post graduation dinner. And, yeah, uh, which is really nice. Yeah, it's really nice. They toast to uh, Lady Bird going to UC Davis. Yeah. Uh, we learn that uh, Miguel got the job that him and his dad interviewed for, and mm-hmm. that Lady Bird is going to be able to work at the grocery store for the summer. Mm-hmm. Miguel's old position. And then Danny drops by and asks about the wait list. And Larry says, oh, fuck. Oh, fuck. Because up until now then, the... they, were, they were able to keep it from Marion. Yeah. And now she's like, what wait list? Yeah. And that's when we get this heartbreaking scene yeah, she, where um, Lady just, Bird is trying to plead with her mother. And it's like, yeah, I know I'm bad and I know that I do all this stuff, but like, talk to me, please talk to me. And it's are, aided are you at least a little really well by I like got this. in, that I got waitlisted. I mean, uh, I know it's easier this year because of 9 11, but still. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but no, her mom is like it's not talking patients. to her, not yeah. looking at her. She, she does not exist to her mother. Mm-hmm. It is heartbreaking. But... And it's followed by a pretty sad montage of summer. Uh, Lady Bird continues working at the cafe, now also working at the grocery store, uh, mm-hmm. getting money. You know, Julie's not around. We, we don't see her hanging out with any friends. Uh, she does finally nope. pass her driver's test, so that's yeah. Cool. Even though she's about to be going to New York, so why does she need a driver's license? But whatever. She turns eighteen. Yeah, she has a birthday. Gets a cupcake, mm-hmm. with dad. And there's that that moment where she goes uh, to the convenience store to buy all the yeah. stuff you can't get until you're eighteen: the cigarettes, the lottery ticket, and she gets a, mm-hmm. a play girl. Uh, yeah, nudie mag. Yeah. And she's like, yeah, um, it's my birthday today. That's why I can buy all those things. <laughs> like, Yeah. She just had to state it because she was just going to get it otherwise. <laughs> That's okay. like, yeah, like when you turn 21, you go to the bar mm-hmm. and you get the drink without them checking your ID. And you're like, hold up, check my ID. Yeah, I'm, right. I'm 21 now. Yeah. Like, come on, do it. Yeah. Yeah. Um... And she gets her acceptance letter to uh, the college that isn't explicitly uh, stated, but is implied to be NYU. Yeah. Uh, and so and she's painting her, her bedroom, taking down all her posters. Yeah. Start Starting anew. Yeah. Paints over oh. Danny and Kyle's names. Yeah. I like that. Um... She gets a tracking device. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> um, the dad has to refinance the house, which oh yeah, yikes! It's terrible because you, you just know that like it's two thousand two, like, and you know what's gonna come up. <laughs> yeah, it's just terrible. Yeah, yeah. It's, the dad is so yeah, giving. And, and we have uh, moments of uh, Marion sitting at the kitchen table at night. Uh, just tearing up this legal pad, trying to write something, and just keeps crumpling the pages. Yeah. 
And then is the airport sequence, which apparently was filmed. Uh, they like, I forget what the term is, where they had, to, I think it's called like stealing the shot. Like they didn't have the permit to shoot at the Sacramento airport. So they they got oh. that whole thing with her dropping uh. off Lady Bird and then Marion drives around and loops back. They got that all in the first take, which is really Dope. even highlights how incredible uh, the L- Laurie Metcalf performances there. She's phenomenal. She's a phenomenal actress. Like she knocked that out the park. Yeah, yeah, she holds her own when Just she's... Just like that that face journey she goes through. Yeah, exactly. Because she's just trying to... She's just so tough. She's just so goddamn tough. But it all comes She down. won't even say goodbye to her daughter. And she just instantly regrets it. She's just like, oh, no, what did I do? What have I done? Yeah, and she's just waiting for the moment where she can turn to go back. She's like, okay, here it is. Here it is. Here it is. Like, here it is smiling here it is. and crying. And uh, she's too late because yeah. 9-11 happened. So she can't go right up to the gate. So she, she yeah. just sees Larry and hugs him, and he says she'll be back. Yeah, she'll be back. She'll come back. Also, uh, when they got out of the car, there was a shot of Larry sneaking uh, a, a manila envelope into Lady Bird's luggage. Yeah. Uh, get the details on that next, because Lady Bird's now in her college dorm room. Mm-hmm. Just, uh, <laughs> if she wanted a big house, she uh, really down, down, <laughs> downgraded, because she had, she had a pretty big bedroom. And yeah, now she's to she's herself in a NYU dorm uh, with her twin bed, like two feet from another twin bed, and that's the mm-hmm. whole room. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, and she she finds the the notes from her mother that her dad salvaged, and he he gave her all of the different versions that she wrote. Um, apparently, she was never able to settle on one. Like she never got to the one that she was going to actually give her daughter. Yeah, she thought her daughter would be too judgmental of her mm-hmm. writing, right. so she didn't give her anything. Yeah. But um, the father gave it to her just so she would know how much her mom loves her. Yeah, and she does. She cries. And she does. Yeah. And then uh, go get a little peek at a uh, Lady Bird experiencing college for the first time. Yeah. She goes to a party. She meets a guy. Shakes hands, of course. Uh, notably introduces herself as Christine and not Lady Bird. Yes. Now, all of a sudden, she wants to just fit in. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> um, the guy asks her where she's from. She says, Sacramento. He says, what? So she changes her answer to San Francisco. Oh, so yeah. She's, so she's Great still lying city. to seem more important, more interesting. Yeah, still lying. Uh, so much growing to do. <laughs> she drinks a lot. And at one point, like halfway up a window, pointing up at Bruce, the star. Yeah, she's like, Where? Bruce, Bruce. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, gets a guy back in her little dorm room. Mm-hmm. Of course, uh, the, the college guy is just <laughs> being judgmental, looking through her CD collection, judging her. <laughs> her Lovely. greatest hits. They're all greatest hits. And she says, but yeah. they're the greatest. <laughs> but they're greatest hits. Like, how can you go wrong? And then they start making out, and she throws up. Immediately and, throws up, and it yeah. very quickly escalates to apparently she got alcohol poisoning, needed to get her stomach pumped, wakes up yeah. in the hospital, um, has this moment where she like stares at this uh, child who with had one something eye. happened with his eye, yeah, has gauze over one eye, and it's like very serious. And I, I guess the idea is, look at your life, girl, like get your shit together. Get your shit together. You, you have. Your sh- like shit's pretty good for you. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then as uh, as as <laughs> this is so funny. <laughs> as predicted it, in that... last week's movie, <laughs> when all the all oh, the freaks the go out, they party on a Saturday night, <laughs> and then they're they on church. church. They go to church on Sunday. <laughs> when I tell you. <laughs> It was so funny that. watching that after watching uh, Two Can Play That Game. Because, <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what Lady Bird that's does. A, yeah. uh, she goes to a, a very beautiful service in New York with the mm-hmm. incredible choir. She's, like, up in the, the balcony looking at the stained glass. Uh, attending church, which was never something she was into. She only was at that school because her mom made her go instead mm-hmm. of public school because she was scared about uh, her daughter's safety there. 
Um, She's but, missed but now, home. Yeah, now she has that connection where she can go to church and feel a connection to her home. Yeah, between calling out for, for Bruce and going to church, she misses Sacramento. Yeah. Uh, and she's going to leave a message for her parents on her cell phone. This is the, the last bit, uh, mostly for her mom. She talks about uh, that summer they, they didn't ever really talk, so they never got to discuss um, how much she liked driving around Sacramento, all the, all the, the winding roads and... Um, the benches. Yeah, how, beautiful, how it's a beautiful city. And then we get shots of Lady Bird in the car and it cuts to uh, the, the sequence we saw earlier of Marion driving home and it's really driving home. These two ladies are cut from the same cloth. Yeah. Um, it's like the, the cuts are matched perfectly where their faces are in the exact same spot in the frame. Um, and that song, I think, is the, the same song that was playing earlier plays. And uh, she says, I, I'm, thank you. I think she says, I'm sorry. Uh, she says, I love you. Yeah. She hangs up and the movie ends. I like this little detail. It ends on an inhale. Lady Bird inhales and then it cuts to black. Mm -hmm. uh, it's coming of age. She's just starting. She took her, yeah. uh, sky's the limit where she goes now. Seeing as it was loosely based on uh, Greta Gerwig's own life, I guess maybe she becomes an uh, Oscar-nominated screenwriter. Yeah. Yeah. And actor and director. That's Lady Bird. That's Lady Bird. That's it. Um, I'm trying to think if I had any other loose thoughts, but I didn't write anything down, so I guess I don't. So I'll ask, is Lady Bird a movie or a film? Hmm. Lady Bird is a film. Mm. Lady Bird is a movie. Those are the two options. Yeah. <laughs> Lady Bird is a film. Lady Bird is a film. I want to say it like it's not a question. Lady Bird is a film. Okay. Yeah. I. I'm going movie. I'm surprising movie. myself, and I'm going to say movie. Um, I think it's it's super well made. So much like care and attention is put into the, mm -hmm. the making of the movie. Um, it's, it's, it's definitely fun yeah. and emotional, but for me, I'd say uh, it's, it's a coming-of-age movie. Um, for me, so yeah, this is a tough one. This is a movie film, I'd say. Yeah, it kind of works as both. Uh, you make me want to change my answer now. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> you make me want to say Lady Bird. Lady Bird is a movie. I, I think it might be an artfully made movie. Possibly, I don't know. All right, yeah. Final That's... answer, Lady Bird. It's a, it's a, it's a picture. Lady, yeah. <laughs> Lady Bird's a movie. Uh, is she a lady or a bird? Is she a lady or a is bird? Is it a lady or, she a... or a bird? <laughs> lady. Um. Okay. Uh, let us know what you think. I guess this is a this is a tough one. So tell us what you yeah. think. Uh, tweet us at Movie Film Pod. Uh, same handle on Instagram. You know, find us on Facebook. Uh, like and subscribe on YouTube. Yes. Uh, tell that. your friends. Um, yeah. Thanks for listening. Have a happy Thanksgiving. And uh, we're, we're going to be back with more on movie. Oh, no, you're frozen. All right. I'll just finish it up. On movie. Movie. Film. Film. Okay. Bye. <laughs>